Hello, good evening indeed, and many thanks for joining us here on Wanda Television. Now, at the top of our edition, these are our headlines. Prime Minister Dr. Edouard Ndjirene urges Rwandans to avoid negative policies that promote divisions rather and emphasize unity in building their country. The Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Dr. Uziel Dajijmana, noted that in the fiscal year 2022-2023, the government will continue to support various activities in order to cope with price fluctuations. Glad to have your company tonight coming to you straight from the heart of Africa, Kigali, and my name is Martina Abera. Prime Minister Dr. Edouard Ndirene urges Rwandans to avoid negative policies that promote divisions rather and emphasize unity in building their country. He made the remarks while speaking at the 28th commemoration event of former employees of the Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Infrastructure, Mini Trasco, and Mini Trap uh, that were killed in the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Sam Kalisa has the report. The event was preceded by a visit to the Ruhanga Genocide Memorial site in Gasawa district, where the staff of the Ministry of Infrastructure laid flowers at the cemetery where 37,762 Tutsi are buried. One of those who survived from the area, Eric Niseneza, who was 14 years old at the time, said that those who survived from the area have managed to rebuild themselves. However, some families were completely wiped out. <laughs> This memorial site is built in what used to be a farm of a man called Saba Saba. No one among his family survived. Even near here in Gasagara, more than 49 families were completely wiped out. It is so sad that after 28 years, we can still see bodies that were not given a decent burial. Yet there are people who were there but did not give the information on the whereabouts of those bodies. During the event, families that were completely wiped out were also remembered, as Gasaba district is one of the districts with the biggest number of completely wiped out families, estimated at 15,593 in the entire country, made up of 68,871 people. On Thursday, at the office of the Prime Minister, a ceremony to commemorate for the 28th time the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi was held. It was attended by the staff of the Prime Minister's office, the staff from the Ministry of Justice, Infrastructure and the Rwanda Law Reform Commission. Senator Professor Dusinji Zemungu Jean-Pierre noted that although there were various speeches emphasizing the killing by the genocidal regime, on the other hand was the voice of hope by the RPF in Hotani Ami. Speeches of Kaibanda. Aviarimana and other politicians and journalists broke our hearts, actually killed us. But on the other hand, a loud voice of Inghotanyi restored hope in us and was a foundation to rebuilding this country. Prime Minister Dr. Edouard Njirene urged Rwandans to remember while rebuilding themselves and the country and be determined to fight negative ideologies, but rather focus on building a better future. The genocide against the Tutsi destroyed our country, and we all know that. In the speech of the senator, he used the strong word of restraining as a way of preventing the evil and focusing on rebuilding the country. So we should all focus on that to remember, unite, and rebuild, hoping for a better future. Twenty-eight years after the genocide against the Tutsi was brought to an end, the 2020 Rwanda Reconciliation Barometer indicated that reconciliation had reached 94.7% from 92.5% in 2015, representing a 2.2% increase.
on to matters of the economy, the Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Dr. Uziel Ndadijamana, noted that in the fiscal year of 2022-2023, the government will continue to support various activities in order to cope with the price fluctuations. This comes as a commodity uh, prices are expected to rise by 9.5% this year compared to 6% rise in the recent days. Sam Kalisa has the report. Statistics indicate that in the year 2021, the world economy grew by 6.1%. In 2022 and 2023, the global economic growth rate is projected to be 3.6%. The decline in economic growth is due to the impact of the Russia-Ukraine war, which has led to a rise in oil and gas prices and food prices. Rwanda's gross domestic product GDP rose by 10.9% in 2021, compared to 3.4% below zero in 2020. This is due to the 6% increase in agricultural output, the industrial sector that rose by 13%, and the service sector that rose by 12%. In the first nine months of 2021, the inflation rate was 0.7%, resulting from low food prices due to the improved agricultural output. However, market prices began to rise in the last quarter of 2021 to 2.1%. In the first quarter of 2022, mainly due to the war between Russia and Ukraine, which severely disrupted trade and caused inflation, domestic food prices rose as a result of decline in agricultural output in the A crop season of this year caused by climate change. This overall rise in prices in Rwanda has reached a 7.5%. Export deficit increased by 0.5%, representing 1 billion 658 million US dollars from 1 billion 650 million US dollars in 2020. Imports increased by 4.3% in 2021 compared to 13.1% in 2020. Exports increased by 8.8% .8 in 2021. Agricultural output is projected to grow at a rate of 4%. Industrial output is projected to grow at a rate of 8.9% compared to 13% in 2021, largely due to rising prices of raw materials used in industries, while the service sector output is expected to grow by 5.8% compared to 12% by 2020. Market prices are projected to rise by 9.5% in 2022 and 8% in 2023, largely due to global inflation. Also, in 2022, the export deficit is projected to increase by 12.2% of the country's GDP, mainly due to rise in export prices. The Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, Dr. Uziel Ndajishimana, told journalists that this year's budget will continue to focus on supporting the agriculture sector and different sectors, including supporting imported commodities such as petroleum products, as there is nothing much the country can do to reduce global rise in prices. <laughs> We will continue to facilitate on acquiring fertilizers and seed so that farmers can always plan on time so that our produce can increase. The other issue is the rise in import prices, something we cannot control. What we will do is reducing the rise in petroleum products. The government has decided to pay half of the amount that rose so that the buyer can at least get the product at cheaper prices. It is very expensive. For example, the amount that the government added on the recent rise in petroleum prices as of June and July amounted to more than 14 billion Rwandan francs. The proposed budget expenditure for the year 2022-2023 will reach 4,558.4 billion Rwandan francs, an increase of 217.8 billion Rwandan francs, or 4.5 percent, or 4.7 percent, compared to 4,440.6 billion Rwandan francs in the revised budget of 2021-2022 that ends June 30th. Domestic financing will reach 2,654.9 billion Rwandan francs, equivalent to 57 percent of the total budget of the year 2022-2023. Expenditure on current budget will reach 
2,796.1 billion Rand francs, which is 60% of the total budget, and will be spent on development and public investment projects amounting to 1,000. 862.4 billion Rwandan francs, accounting for 40% of the total budget. The Minister of Finance and Economic Planning emphasizes that the big part of this year's budget will focus on national development activities. The budget law puts an emphasis on all government projects, from infrastructure to agriculture to education, health and others. It is clearly indicated in a large perspective most of the big projects are infrastructure-related, mostly electricity, water, roads and more. That's what costs a lot of money. So the list is there and very clear, but most of the projects are recurring. As the government continues to implement the seven-year government program or the National Strategy for Transformation 1, it will continue to improve our financial management programs by reducing budget deficits and maintaining the lending rate, but at the same time, fighting the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economy and inflation on the international markets caused by the war between Russia and Ukraine. The Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning says it is hopeful that there will be no new variants of the COVID-19 pandemic, although many countries will not reach the 70% of the total number of their population fully vaccinated by 2022, as developing countries still have inadequate access to vaccines. Sam Kalisa, Rwanda Television News. Thank you very much, Kalisa, for that report. On Thursday, the National Seed Consortium was launched. It aims at improving the coordination of seed sector and increase, increasing the production and productivity of all targeted crops and thereby meets farmers' needs for quality seeds. Olive Nete has the report. The National Seed Consortium, which was officially launched on Thursday, will assist in solving problems that seed multipliers face and also help them in finding competitive markets. George Ngarambe, the chairperson of the forum, points out that introducing multiplication of seeds inside the country has assisted in providing quality seeds to farmers and on time. We are grateful that the country decided to import hybrid seeds and started multiplying them in the country. We usually face challenges while importing seeds, like not receiving them on time and poor quality. We thank our country for supporting this program of multiplying seeds within the country in collaboration with the private sector. Jean-Paul Ndajijimana, the country manager at Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa, emphasized on the importance of the forum and stressed that it will assist in providing information needed for proper planning of the budget. Because they are aware of all information regarding multiplication of seeds, they will help us when it comes to drafting a budget of seeds needed in the country. Information about the quantity of seeds available as well as seeds needed for the farming season. This will assist us in providing seeds to farmers on time as well as avoid giving them those that are of poor quality. The second problem that we want to solve is about finding competitive markets. For example, recently seeds were produced in a big quantity. We want them to provide us with required information so that we can export the product whenever provided in large quantity. Dr. Octave Semnaga, the Director General for Agriculture Modernization in the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Resources, noted that all seeds needed are currently multiplied in the country and stressed that the forum will contribute significantly in increasing crop production. The seed is important in the agriculture sector because the production starts with a good seed. If a farmer uses a bad seed, that means already he or she has lost the production. Uh, in Rwanda, we have been uh, putting in place various strategies, policies, programs to increase the use of improved seeds. And this is one of the initiatives. The setting up of a forum 
putting together all the seed producers will contribute in the increase of the production of seeds, of improved seeds, and also the extension to the level of the farmer. According to the National Institute of Statistics, the number of farmers participating in the use of improved seeds is increasing, where large-scale farmers who use these seeds are at 81.9% and the small-scale farmers on 31%. Olive Nete, RTV News. Thank you, Olive, for that report. Moving on, the General Assembly of the National Consultative Forum of Political Organizations on Thursday thanked the President of the Republic and all Rwandans for their contribution to the smooth running and success of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. <laughs> In the statement released by the National Consultative Forum of Political Organizations, they congratulated President Paul Kagame on taking over the chairmanship of the Commonwealth for the next two years, pledging the forum's support and wishing him success in his new duties. The decision was made after analyzing the role of this forum and other institutions to the success of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. We thank security organs for maintaining order and security during the meeting, but we also thank Rwandans. Many Rwandans belong to different political parties, so Chogam was a success because Rwandans in different categories played an important role. Resource. The meeting was also attended by the Minister of Environment, Dr. Mujao Maria Jean d'Arc, who shared with the members of the forum the steps taken by the government of Rwanda to protect the environment and address effects of climate change, urging them to better support this program through members of these political parties across the country. <laughs> All political parties have members all over the country. All together, we need to make the environment our priority and adopt environmental protection policies in agendas of all political parties and make it a beginning of projects and programs that make the environment at their forefront of what they do. Senator Omuhide Adrié, spokesperson of the National Consultative Forum of Political Organizations, expressed their determination to continue supporting the government in environmental protection programs. We do not work alone. As you probably heard, we exchanged views on how rich countries can assist poor countries in environmental protection programs and fighting the effects of climate change, especially that most of the toxic industrial fumes are produced by the industries. So we cannot do it alone as a country. We need to collaborate with other countries because this is a universal issue. All political parties were represented during this meeting of the National Consultative Forum of Political Parties. Thank you, Sam Kalisa, for that report. Some of the women who are assisted by the Women for Women project says, say that the project found them when they were poor, but now they have the entrepreneurial skills and the ability to work and develop themselves and their families. They are women from seven districts where the Women for Women project is working in, which are Nyaruguru, Muhanga, Kasabo, Kijochiro, Ujesera, Rugwamagana, and Kayonza. The women say that before all this, they were badly off to the extent where they didn't have enough money to feed themselves and their families. However, after receiving various training sessions, some became farmers and are able to make a living for themselves and be able to expand into international markets, and others partake in various activities for self-development so that they can save money and make a living. They taught us how we can be able to start a business. We immediately put the knowledge we acquired to work and started farming and specialized in greens that we can be able to sell in the market. We started out thinking it wasn't a big deal, but the more we do it, the more growth we witness. We started our farming locally, but then we grew into international markets. Up to now, I still apply the knowledge and skills I was taught. I never used to have a house before. I didn't have a place to stay. But now I do, and I'm very well off. Ezekiel Ruchema, head of the Economic Empowerment Department at Women for Women Rwanda, say that although the Women for Women project has helped these women, their hope is that they should continue to thrive because what Women for Women wants is for them to never see poverty again, but instead help their peers that haven't achieved what they have to do so. <laughs> Urunu 
ntabwo twavuga ngo as you can see it is a journey these women are not quite where we want them to be but we'll get there our hope is that in the 78000 women that still need to be helped we may increase the number from 1440 We also ask these women who have proved to be outstanding in the level of growth and development they have shown that they can serve as an example to their fellow peers to achieve such success as well. Yibuza akaba abigira kuri babagore bagaragaje eh ubudashikirwa mu gukora ya mishinga. Director General of Gender Promotion and Women Empowerment at the Ministry of Gender and Family Promotion Silas Ngayabosha says the women who have been helped in a variety of ways including training and connecting with financial institutions to be able to develop should not end their growth journey here but should also help others as their goal is to see women achieving greater heights of success in any field. Icyambere twabasaba ni ugukomeza urugendo kuberako umunsi hagira usubira The first thing that we ask of them is to keep going with their development journey. The steps that they have taken, some who are working with different financial institutions, others selling to international markets, they should know that it is a big deal and an important step forward. If they are to take a step back, their peers who haven't gotten to their level yet might get discouraged. That is why they need to keep striving to move forward. The number of women assisted by the Women for Women project is 1440 who have been divided into various cooperatives. And on behalf of the news production team and myself, we thank you for sticking with us. Have a great night and stay safe.